Now let's talk a little bit about the landlords because they have been really left out in this whole process and waiting for you, the renter, to pay your rent. And there hasn't been much money forthcoming in their direction. Yes, landlords, you can apply for this money as well. And these are the things that you're going to need. A lease or rental agreement reflecting the renter's name, their residence address, and the monthly rent that they owe you or that is due. You need to have had a rent ledger or a rent statement showing the balance of unpaid rent for each tenant. You need a W-8 or W-9 for your tax purposes. And if you have 10 or more tenants and would like to upload information for all of them at once, you can apply. Some landlords are aware of this and probably may have already applied for uh, the assistance for you. This is why we urge you to talk to your landlord. However, the landlord was supposed to come to you, the tenant, with these three documents back in March of 2020. Many of them really didn't know about it. This has not been a real talked about topic about what the landlord's responsibilities were. If the landlord didn't join the apartment owners association or if they're not aware that they had to perform on your behalf to help you and to help themselves actually, some money to me is better than no money. And therefore, had they even applied for you the money, they would have gotten some money. Um, some people just kind of shy away from these kind of programs and to their peril, they may have missed the boat. However, you as a tenant can apply on your own and be given the money to pay your rent so you're caught up and don't get evicted and have an eviction on your record. The highlights of this program are, you're gonna get free financial assistance, is available to landlords and renters who need help with unpaid or future rent or utilities. Landlords and renters are both encouraged to apply. Income eligible applicants may qualify regardless of immigration status and will not be required to show proof of citizenship. So for those of you that do not have your citizenship papers in order, uh, you are also protected with this initiative. Assistance from the COVID-19 rent relief program does not count as earned income for renters. So the money that you're about to be given, I don't care if it's $1,000 for the, for the whole, what, six months, you do not have to show that as uh, earned income. And it will not affect your eligibility for the state benefit program, such as unemployment or such as CalFresh or CalWorks. The fact that you are getting the renter's assistance does not affect CalFresh Cal Works or any of your state benefits. All applicant information is kept private and will not be shared. Applications will be accepted on an ongoing basis. Priority assistance will be given to income eligible households most at risk of eviction. Once an application has been successfully processed, both the landlord and the renter will be notified of the next step. As you probably know, if you filled out your paperwork in the last month and a half, things are moving very slowly at renter's assistance. Why? We have no idea. Things are just taking a little bit longer. I think things are being processed. They're also waiting to see if there was going to be an extension given. And I have here, Biden asked Congress to extend the COVID-19 eviction ban set to expire this week. So we are looking forward to that happening, but it, you know, they got to wait for Congress to step in and see what they want to do. Unpaid rent. Landlords who participate in the COVID-19 rent relief program can get reimbursed for an eligible renter's unpaid rent dating back to April 1st, 2020. That is huge, landlords. I highly suggest that you move forward, get your paperwork together, and apply for your money from last year moving forward. Upcoming rent, eligible renters whose landlords choose not to participate in the program 
may apply on their own and receive assistance for unpaid rent dating back to April 1st, 2020. This question keeps coming up. Well, I, I needed it last year and I didn't get it. You can go ahead and apply for it up to last year for the renter as well. Upcoming rent, eligible renters can receive financial assistance for their upcoming monthly rent. I had a girl that she paid her rent all last year and she ended up telling me that she needed it from April till probably June. She was really having a hard time. So this is a wonderful thing. Even if you've been really good about paying your rent and your finances were great, you can do it based on upcoming rent that you know maybe you're gonna be laid off. They've already told you. Utility assistance unpaid or upcoming. Eligible renters may receive assistance for unpaid utility payments dating back to April 1st, 2020 or for future utility payments, which will both be compensated at 100% of the cost. So they're not even doing a percentage of your utility payments. They're paying the full amount. What are the requirements? If you have been impacted by COVID-19 and are income eligible, the state will calculate this when you apply and have unpaid rent or utilities or need help with future rent or utilities, you may apply for CA COVID-19 rent relief. We have a couple of forms here when you go into the website that you are gonna to have to fill out. Now that form is the one that's your declaration page that you see on the screen at this time. And it says, you had a loss of income caused by COVID-19 pandemic. Number two, you had increased out-of-pocket expenses directly related to performing essential work during COVID-19, increased expenses directly related to health impacts of COVID-19, which means you caught it, one of your children caught it, you were caring for a parent, um, you had lost wages, child care because the schools were closed does qualify as well uh, because you had to stay home from work to care for your children, an elderly parent or a disabled family member. Increased costs for child care or attending to, you know, I just said that. Any other circumstances that would um, be related would be what you would circle. And then you'd sign and you turn this into the landlord. Be sure you give this form to the landlord and keep a copy so that when you go to see the rent um, relief program people, you have this as your document. The other document that you want to show is the one that stipulates how much money you've been paying to show that you're current on your 25%. Some people are not current, some people are. Some people paid in large chunks and they didn't know they only had to pay 25%. One girl indicated to me, she gave the person 10,000 since last year. Well, she only had to pay 25%. So then they would aggregate that over say a year of her payments to see where she falls with her 25%. Are you the property owner or are you the property management? company that handles the property or the agency who has legal authority to lease to lease the unit. Some of you are in these high rise buildings and they are managed through a company. And so your documentation will be sent to them on your behalf. You know, it won't be just like a private owner of a private property, like you're renting a rear residence or a fourplex or something like that this would be sent to the property management. So they ask you, what are you? Do you, you have one or two eligible tenants? Do you have a tenant lease or written agreement with the eligible tenant? And you have to agree to 20% of the unpaid rent for the above time period to waive it. In other words, landlords, they're asking you to waive 20, this 20% that we're asking for, we've told the renters to pay, you're gonna wa waive it for forever. You're not gonna try to go 
back into small claims court later on, as is stipulated that you could do. If you don't agree to the program, then yes, you can go into small claims court and try to re uh, receive your money and get a judgment from the person. Other than that, you will get your money up front from the Renters Assistance Program. And as an eligible tenant, are you a struggling financially and seeking assistance for rent and or utilities for your primary resident? That's the first question. Has anyone in the household experienced reduction or loss of income or incurred significant expenses and other hardships? If that's the case, you're gonna check that one. Can anyone in your household demonstrate that they are either risk of homelessness or housing instability, has passed due rent or utilities or is in an unsafe living condition? So being in an unsafe living condition also can be a precursor to you uh, qualifying for this program. If you have checked all of the above or are eligible to apply below applying, you'll need the following items. You need to verify a government issued birth certificate, driver's license, or identification card. Nothing else is going to work. Your employment identification card, your marriage license, certified or um, certificate or a certified divorce decree, or the current school records of your children would also be proof of who you are and what your relationship is to the people that live with you. Verifying your income, you're going to need a 1099, a 1040, 1040A, which are your standard tax prepared preparation papers, right? Your W-2 form, most recent paycheck stubs, your employer generated salary report or a letter stating your current annual income. So a letter will suffice based upon what your income is or an earning statement or current bank statements. Your bank statements, because most people, money goes into, their, into uh, their account by direct deposit, that would be sufficient as well. You also need your lease agreement. You need an official letter from a third party showing your name and address, a government issued library card. I don't know why a library card, but government issues. Utility statements from providers. Now, most of you that are renting have some type of utility bill that comes in your name. I'm sure they're going to want to see your name on it or one of the people who live in your um, unit or residence. Verify rent owed. A current lease signed by the applicant and the landlord or sub lesser. Remember, because there's such difficulty in getting um, or renting places now, many people are subletting to people in their homes. They rent a bedroom out or they rent out a back apartment or they've added an ADU, an additional dwelling unit. Yes, that would qualify the landlord to get the money if the person has not been paying. Uh, it's called a sub lesser, okay? And you do need a lease for that person as well. So just a word of mouth is not gonna get it. You would have had to make an official month to month tenancy or lease to them for six months, a year, and have some type of proof that that was going on. Pretty much that is the law as it stands right now. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat. We'll try to get to those and go through some of them. I'd like to open it up to Mr. Brown again to talk about some of the legal assistance programs. I think you had one called Just Answer or someone that where they could go to. I have several that I'm aware of, but Yes. Um, in this effort to support um, the community and Roslyn as she's leading out, we had reached out to our legal counsel, um, some attorneys that uh, are very experienced in real estate and eviction housing rights, and a couple of uh, online assistants um, 
One that I found online was called JustAnswer.com. Uh, they there is a five dollar fee to uh, have a brief consultation with an attorney, and they will get you know get back to you with whatever answers you may you may have. Uh, that's a low cost uh, low cost fee uh, there as well. Um, we're also connecting to a network of attorneys as we see this is going to be an ongoing um, process and information changes on a daily basis, it seems, as we get closer and closer to this, uh, to the ending of the moratorium and uh, as the legislation changes on a it seems like on a regular basis every time we learn something new. So we're going to be um, collaborating with a, uh, a legal network of attorneys to assist us. Uh, we will have a, uh, a walk-in facility uh, for those that need in-person counseling uh, here at, um, at Keeps Clubs, uh, who has graciously allowed us to use their facility since they're um, no longer having kids come in to learn about the environment and that sort of thing. So New Life Global Development is going to sort of uh, merge with Keeps Clubs and use the facility at 229 East Spruce Street here in the city of Inglewood and in California. Uh, so we will have uh, facility for people to walk in and actually bring documentation and talk to someone, um, as well as uh, we'll be doing Zoom calls um, and uh, meetup meetings and that sort of thing. So, um, so uh, look forward to the future for us bringing in attorneys that will be able to assist you. And for those that want to just jump online and find some, we found a good resource that's low cost and only charge $5 It's called justanswer.com. Thank you. Well, we want to thank you for attending today. If you have any further questions, my name and phone number are on the uh, marquee and we look forward to hearing from you. If anything um, you didn't get clarity on, you can also email me at the address shown below and thank you for your attendance today. Thank you. God bless.